Hi, I'm Tim Grote with Cobb Technologies, and today we're going to go over a basic training of the Konica Minolta I-Series of equipment. All right, first off, I'm going to show you the most typical places where you'll get jams on various machines. Um, the most common is going to be right here on top of the document feeder. You'll just pull this little tab. You should see the paper sitting right here. All I say is just make sure that you pull out the paper gently uh, because if you yank it out, a little piece gets torn and stuck inside, then you'll need someone to come out and uh, kind of take this apart so that they can get that little piece out and it will continue working. The next spot that we'll look at for where it was common jam is going to be right here on the side. So there's a little handle, just pull out on that. You'll typically see the paper sitting here or here as it feeds up from the different paper trays. Again, just pull the paper out gently. You don't want any tears because then the tech will have to come out and remove it for you. The last couple places where you might see a jam is here if you have a finisher. And again, you'll see the paper just sitting right there and just pull it out as needed. Anything that is green, you can lift up so that you can pull the paper out. So if you want to scan anything on this machine, you would just put your paper right here, or you can open it and put it here on the platinum glass. If you do have any kind of issues of uh, streaking or anything on your pages, sometimes it's just paper dust on the glass, get a dry cloth and just wipe down either here or here. All right, next up, I'm going to show you how to replace the toner. So you will just open up right here. You'll take whichever toner that is empty, pull it out. You can take this old one and throw it away. They're designed to be disposable. Or if you'd like, there is a recycling program that we'll go into more detail on in a video. Once you get the new toner, you just slide it right back in in the place and color where it is associated. Here is where you replace the waste toner bottle. You'll just press down on these tabs and pop out. Then you'll take your new one and pop it right back in, just like you do with the toner. Um, the only thing you don't want to do is take a full waste toner bottle, empty it, and try and put it back in. The machine will know that it was the same waste toner bottle, and it will throw off an error code, and the tech will need to fix that. So next up, I'll show you how to refill a paper tray. You just open the tray like this. As you'll see, there's these little blue handles for guides. You can open it and close it depending on the size of paper that you need. Same here. You can open or close depending on the size of paper you need. Make sure the guides are tight because if they're not, that's where a lot of misfeed and jamming can happen. And when you put in a new ream of paper, just make sure you take the new ream and fan it before you put it in because a lot of times new reams actually have pages stuck together and that can cause a lot of issues. So next, for replacing staple cartridges, all you do is open up here. You're gonna wheel this all the way over to the end, and you'll see this blue tab. You just pull out on the blue tab, and you'll see it just slides right out. You'll take out the staples, put the new staples in this little cartridge, and then you'll just slide it right back in there. When you close this, it will automatically send the uh, staples back to where they need to be, in position. So right now, there is actually a basic style and a classic style for the Konica Minolta user interface. I'm going to show you the basic style first because that is uh, the newest one that has just come out on the i-series. Okay, so this is the basic screen. This is the copy page that we're going to go into now. So you can see there's a couple basic things that are already set up for you. First of all is color. It's set to auto color. We can have this defaulted when it is installed to whatever you like or change it later on. I would always recommend that you go with either auto color or black and white. And the reason why between those two is because full color will make every page a color page, even if there's no color on the page. Whereas auto color will say this first page is color and the rest are black and white. And then of course, black and white, if you don't need any color at all. Paper, currently selected to auto. If you want to change that, you just hit here and select which tray you want it to come from. This is really helpful if you use a special kind of paper in any of the paper trays or anything like that. Density, so if you ever want to change the density, make it a little darker or a little lighter, you can do that right here. Duplex settings, so this is if you want to go one side or two side, you would just hit this. 
and you can see the first is what you're putting in, the second is what you're getting out. So if you put in one-sided documents and you want them to become two-sided documents, you would just select this. Or if you want two-sided documents to become one-sided, you would select that. Stapling. So you would select here if you want corner or side stapling, you would choose whichever one you prefer. For separate scan, if you turn this on, basically what it is is if you have too many documents that won't fit in the document handler but you want as one PDF, you can put it in there, it'll scan it for you, and then you add, it'll ask you, do you want to send this or is there more to scan? You'll say, there's more scan or I'm ready to send it. And when you scan in more, it'll combine them all into one PDF instead of having two separate PDFs because you don't have enough room in the document handler to handle that many pages. Original type, text photo or photo printed is what it's defaulted to. Honestly, you should be able to get clear images if you go photo, printed paper, or uh, photo, paper, um, dot matrix, something like that. But personally, I don't see a big difference, so this is going to be really up to you. Combine, so if you want to combine multiple pages into one, you would do that here. Mixed originals, so if you have things that you're scanning to make a copy, you can go ahead and pick mixed originals if you have sheets that are different length but the same width or different width but the same length. Blank page removal, if you turn this on, if you go ahead and make a copy, any blank pages, say on the back side of a one side sheet of paper, it will go ahead and remove that for you. Original size, auto detect, you probably won't need to change this very often, but if you do, you can go ahead and select what size paper that you are copying. All right, next for scan to email, you would just touch here. You would select whoever you want. You can select multiple people if you would like, or you could just do one person. Then here is where you can change the scan from color to black and white. The reason you would typically change this is if the file size is too large and you have file, res file size restrictions on your email, um, you might want to switch to black and white. That way you can reduce the file size a little bit. Scan size auto detect. Again, you can select here if you would like to select a certain size of paper that you are scanning, but auto detect should, uh, so long as the standard size should detect it perfectly for you. Resolution. So again, we default it to 300 by 300, which should be plenty uh, amount of resolution to make the image look crisp. But if you do need to reduce it down to two by two, because you need to reduce that file size again due to email size restrictions, you can do that here. Or if you want to move it up to 600 by 600 because you want something very high def, you can do that as well. File type. So this is where you'll change the file type. You can do compact PDF, which is the default regular PDF, TIFF, or JPEG. More file types are available, but those are an additional feature. Duplex settings. This is where you tell if it's a two-sided document or a one-sided document. Document name, subject. So this is where you can name the file. You can put a subject in as to where the scan is coming from. That way you know what scan is coming to you. It's not just a random series of numbers. Separate scan, this is the same as the copy. So if you need to scan in something to yourself and the document handler cannot fit that many uh, pages at one time, but you want all to be as one PDF, you go ahead and feed in your first amount of pages, the separate scan on, it'll ask you if you want to continue, and then you'll say yes, you'll scan in your next pages, and then you'll say done, and it'll send it all to your email as one PDF. Mix size originals, this is just like the copy screen. So again, same width, different width. Blank page removal. So again, if you have a one-sided document and you want all the blank pages to be removed, you can go ahead and turn this on and it will remove them all for you. Density. If you need to make something darker or lighter, you can do that here by changing the density. Original type, as we said before, things are supposed to come out a little clearer if you say, uh, you know, photo, or if you're doing dot matrix, but honestly, my eyes cannot see a difference between the difference.
So now we're going to show you the copy screen under the classic style. So you just hit copy and you'll see it's all the same features as you had before when we went through the basic screen. Uh, they're just laid out a little differently. So here's where you do color or black and white, auto color. Again, you don't want to choose full color. Paper source. So here's where you choose if you want to go to any other paper source other than auto. Zoom. So if you have any presets, paper size you want to switch to. So if you want to take an 11 by 17 and switch to a half by 11 or vice versa. Uh, basically, uh, you can do that so it switches automatically or you can just hit a little bit at a time if you just want to zoom something up a little bit or decrease it a little bit. Here's your duplex and combining. So again, it's just one side to one, one to two, two to, two to one, and then your combining is actually in here as well. And finally, your finishing. So this is where you do your grouping, sorting, corner, or two position statement. Okay, so now we're going to go over the scan screen on the classic UI. So you would just select whichever scan you want to go to. So if you want to go to JSON, you would select JSON. You could scan to more if you wanted at one time. So as you can see here are all the same features that we discussed on the uh, basic screen. They're just laid out a little differently. So here's your one side or two sides, so you can change that there. Here's your resolution if you need to change that color or black and white scan. Here's where you choose the file type if you want to change it from compact PDF. Here's where you would change the file name or the subject so you'd be able to name your scan instead of having be a random number or letters. And then here's where you would do separate scan if you wanted to combine multiple scans into one PDF. Thank you for watching our short video on the basic training of the Konica Minolta i-series. If you want to learn more, head to cobtechnologies.com.